Hello again, I am Jim Bob. Welcome back to Sandy Bay. It's Wednesday 10th. As you're watching this, it should be Wednesday 10th, which means Big Bud is out. Have you got, you see, got yourselves your copy of the DLC yet? Have you played about with it? Are you still umming and ahhing about where to buy it? Well, hopefully, my DLC review video will be live on the channel already. So uh, make sure you have a look at that. It'll break down all the different pieces of equipment. You'll see uh, various different things in operation. You'll see side-by-side -side comparisons against other machinery. You'll get my thoughts on whether I think it's, you know, worth the money. And uh, please do bear in mind that obviously as a console gamer, my approach and reasoning behind the video may be a little bit different to your own if you're a PC player in terms of whether or not it's worth buying. But the showcasing will, you know, be just as important regardless of the format that you play on, whether it be PC, Mac or console. So, we need to fill this guy up with fuel. Just close enough to do that. Let's check on our... Let's turn the lights off. Check on our cultivation. He's plodding along, doing a good job. big this fuel tank is he's been thirsty this guy he's done a lot of plowing mainly in the same straight up and down line <laughs> plowing the same the same grooves over and over again he's back on point now he's back as a focused piece of machinery now that he's pulling the cedar no overlapping just up and down side by side rather than on the same strip of land over and over again How big is this fuel tank? Come on. Oh, can you imagine having to fill this many litres of fuel at a petrol station in real life? You'd be there for half an hour filling one of these things. Yeah, welcome to Sandy Bay. Today's episode, we refuel a tractor. That's it. End of episode. Not the most exciting viewing. There we go. We're finally full. Fantastic. Right, let's put some seed back in this thing. Should really put that uh, trailer away. I have been thinking about getting a new trailer for the farm. Haven't decided yet. Again, it's it's not high on the list of priorities. You know, we, we don't even have any crops to put in a trailer at the moment, apart from what's in our stores. Uh, this is what we have. We have 68,211 litres of wheat, 33,480 litres of barley, just under 8,000 litres of canola, just under 5,000 litres of sunflowers, just under 8,000 of soybeans, and just under 8,000 of corn. As you can see, the prices aren't too bad, but they are fantastic. That uh, top price on the soybeans that's still dropping, that was at 1900 and something. But given that there was less than 8,000 litres, it just wasn't worth dragging them all the way over there to sell such a small amount. So come the end of this this harvest that we are preparing for we will have you know a good amount of barley and wheat to sell we will also have a very good amount of soybeans and canola to sell so we'll have some real choice and uh, options with our crops when it comes to uh, to making some money my only worry is just how much debt we're going to be in by the time that happens 
As you can see, we're at 20,000, almost 19,000 overdrawn. We do still have 50,000 of our loan available to us, but uh, that's emergency money. I'd rather not use that just yet. It's not like we get a penalty for being overdrawn. In real life, your bank would be uh, applying charges left, right, and centre. Once that, you went one pound over your, you know, you know, you know one pound into your overdraft. We're going to charge you a pound a day until you clear it. Once that, you've gone over your agreed overdraft. We're going to charge you uh, five pound a day until you get back into your agreed overdraft. Now, at the end of the month, that's you know a lot of uh, additional money that's being racked up there. That's how it is with my bank. I don't know about yours. All right, so soybeans are selected. It's time to start planting. Let's drop her down, turn her on. And away we go. We are invariably going to have a couple of patches where the field hasn't been cultivated on this field. That's not too bad. I can live with that. Like I said, technically I'm making more work for myself by cultivating these fields. I don't technically have to. You know, I can just plant directly on them, but uh, I like to keep the stage there. Besides, we're going to have to do it at the end of the harvest anyway. We're going to have to cultivate before we can replant. Because these cedars, you know, literally just seed, so it's good practice, good routine to get into. Like I said, it's different equipment. You know, we haven't used lemkin really on any of our other farms. You know, we've relied very, very much on cedars that auto cultivate as well as plant. You know, like the uh, the Vardestat. Uh, six meter cedar that we're using on uh, Drumard Farm and then the Horse Pronto that we're using on American Outback and on Massey Manor as well. We will be ditching the Pronto on American Outback once we have enough money to be able to buy a bigger cedar. And tomorrow will be the first episode, as you're watching this, tomorrow uh, will be Thursday the 11th. That'll be the first video on American Outback to be released on its own without, you know, a second episode following it straight away. And it'll also be the first episode to have some form of Big Bug DLC uh, on one of my farms. I'm deliberately waiting until the DLC is out before I record that episode because we are in a position to bring some in straight away. I don't know what's going to be brought in yet. But hopefully you'll uh, hopefully you'll approve, hopefully you'll like it. Right, square off along here. for judgment it's almost perfect into that corner oh that's so close it's almost like watching the uh, the DVD symbol on a on a standby screen wait to see if it will bounce right into the corner we weren't far off I 
had someone a little while ago say that they would like to see me do a Lawfolds farm. I don't have any plans to change one, you know, change up the map order that we have right now. And four farms is enough to run. Uh, there's no uh, no immediate need to add a fifth into that. It would just cause a lot of headache with uh, you know recording and a release schedule and having to upload another set of farms as well. Plus, I do want to try and uh, you know bring other games to the channel as well as farming sim you know I am uh, I do have plans for some games already and there are some others in the future that I would like to bring as well and uh, five farms I think it's just a little bit too much if I went to five farms then you would only get one episode per week per farm at least with four I have the option of doing uh, you know uh, three farms will get two episodes a week and one farm will get one you know I can do an episode every day that way what I may do is I may actually drop down to just three farms in, at some point in the uh, in the future maybe sort of end of May June time I may drop down to just three farms we'll ditch one of them whichever is going to be the more likely to to bring to a conclusion or the least popular we can we can perhaps take a vote and then uh, just uh, drop say we're dropping down to three farms each farm will get two episodes a week that way and then there'll be a day off from farming sim let's put a, a line along the top there Okay, the cultivator has stopped by the look of it. Let's just take control. Get this guy up and running again. There are certain kind of almost dead spots I find when you work these fields with AI where the AI just stops and refuses to actually work so you have to drive through them before you can get going again. It's kind of odd. It is what it is. Oh, we actually missed a line along the top. Look, I have to go back and, uh, and redo that. I believe I actually uh, misjudged that top line. Still, it's done now. There's no point complaining or com or uh, crying about it. We'll just uh, run along back along the top. Doesn't really do anything. Just means we get back to where we were a little bit slower than originally planned by moving at planting speed instead of normal driving speed. It's not far to go. to finish this field off for me because I am going to concentrate more on this guy now. I want to try and get him uh, ready to get started on... Uh, field 14 that's going to need a cultivating as well
and we'll leave those little strips there. It's not too bad. Racing our T9 back up the hill there. So this will be the second time I've cultivated this field. This field was already in a a plough state even though it wasn't actually technically ploughed so the easiest way to tell where I had ploughed to clear the state was to cultivate it first then plough it and now I'm cultivating it again so it's gone from a ploughed state to cultivated to ploughed state and now it's going back to cultivated I do kind of wish that when we when we bought fields, you know, uh, that they weren't in a plow state. It just it, it's frustrating because you buy the field and you know it needs to be ploughed, but it has a current plow state on it, so you can't just hire a worker because the worker will go, well, this thing's ploughed. Nothing for me to do here, and will refuse to work at all. And if you run a plow manually. If you're running the plough in the same direction as, as the plough, uh, as the furrows that are already on there, it becomes almost impossible to tell where you have ploughed and what still needs to be ploughed. So the easiest thing to do is to just cultivate the field and then do it again. I mean, it's not so bad now that we have subsoilers. I mean, we only have um, a four metre subsoiler at the moment, you know, on console. You can hook two of them up together with the Lemkin Gigant, but as you've seen from my own ploughing experiences, it doesn't seem to like running two things back, you know, side by side. You know, the AI does seem to be a little bit screwy, so I can't confirm that that would be the most efficient way of doing it because you would probably end up just subsoiling the same strip of land over and over again on a number of occasions. But now the big bud is out, you do have the 8 metre culti plough. You'll need about 450 horsepower to pull it, but you'll now have an 8 metre plough with subsoiler. Well, sorry, an 8 metre you know, cultivator with a subsoiler. So you will be able to get that plough state removed. Useless if you want to actually, you know, uh, custom define the outline and border of your field. But if you've already done that, or if you're not bothered about doing that, then that thing is fantastic. We will definitely be getting one for this farm. I think, going forward. You know, uh, just because the, uh, let's say, the Lemkin plow system is just a real pain. So we will probably end up getting rid of the... Uh, um, the Gigant and the two Dolomite 400s. Or we might keep one of the 400s. Uh, and get rid of the 300 instead. There we go, right. Let's start uh, cultivating. I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to try going across the field. I haven't done that before. I don't know how well it's going to work. I guess there's only one way to find out. We'll start here, that way no matter which way it goes, I'm hoping he's going to sort of turn right at the end. Um, I'm hoping that it'll uh, actually keep going all the way to the end and turn around and come back and not leave any gaps. I kind of doubt that's going to be the case, but 
It's, an, it's a useful experiment, this, as I say. I've not tried doing it this way before. So we'll be curious to see the outcome. Let's check in on our seeding. How's he doing? He's doing pretty good. He's done quite a lot of the field already. Yeah, a good half of it is already seeded. Yeah, he can run at a good old speed. This uh, this guy, that big old engine. Okay, so he's gone the way I was hoping he was going to go. It's taking a long time to turn around, though. I kind of expected that would be the case. I'm going downhill so he gets to run a bit faster, because, you know, obviously the engine is a little bit underpowered for this... Uh, piece of equipment it needs 300 horsepower to pull it effectively and we're running at 288 in real life we would be uh, putting way too much strain on a permanent basis on this engine so we will be wearing it out quicker But there are no negative long-term effects. As uh, so he has left a patch, I had a feeling he was going to do that. It's not a big one. It'll be quick and easy to clear up. But uh, yeah, there's no there's no long-term repercussions for overworking an engine in this game. The only uh, downside is that because it takes you know a little bit longer to do the job is that you you'll, you end up putting in slightly more working hours so your maintenance costs go up a little bit quicker that's the only real downside to having an underpowered piece of equipment in this game there's certainly no risk of catastrophic failure Let's see, what's our price is doing? We've got one field that's going up in value. Uh, let's... I don't know, we're still seeding, so we don't want to change the time yet. We're not going to sell the sunflowers. We're not going to sell the barley... Uh, sorry, the canola or the soybeans, because we've got more of those coming. We're not going to sell the corn, because there's not enough to sell yet. So we're looking at wheat, and we're looking at barley. Barley has started to go up down at Little Ham stores. All the other prices aren't that good. So, uh, definitely nothing we can really sell at this stage. But I really would like to get wood chips up and running as quick as I can on this farm if we end up having to use one of our existing field if I could actually I could actually turn field 11 because of the way it's shaped that's nah, the wrong button that's what I want because of the way this field is shaped I could actually turn that into a nice field for planting I mean it's a bit big really for that I don't really want to use up a field quite so big um just because it means it's going to cost an absolute fortune in pallets and planting costs. I just don't think there's any other fields that would really be that suitable. I mean, the field 34 would be a good one, but as I said, we've, we've already discussed it's very expensive, and because of the angle it's at, it's not a 45-degree angle, so a worker is not going to be able to work that. We're going to have to run it ourselves, uh, which is going to be a pain because then we can't run alongside and just keep filling a trailer. And we need a field that is relatively flat or, or at the right angle, which rules out these fields here as well, because these are all at the wrong angles. 
You know, we could perhaps come down here and you've got field 21, but it's in the opposite side of the sawmill, which isn't uh, isn't all that good. Um, I don't think we can sell grains, uh, wood chips here, can we? It's just grains. Yeah, our sell points are just grains. So yeah, we are looking at very limited... opportunities really on this farm that's a shame yeah field 11 is starting to look quite a good option as far as that goes How are we getting on with the cultivating? Yeah, he's doing well. He's getting it done. Got about three minutes to go before this episode comes to an end. So let's take over and see if we can at least finish the top half of this field. See, he's almost finished on that field there. Look, in terms of seeding, not a, a, a lot of real estate left to work on. AI is going to start complaining in a minute and just stop. So we'll have to go and manually finish planting that field. just packed in actually no no he's still going Most of this field is now done as well, so uh, that's a good thing. Not a lot of work left to get our planting done. I am definitely looking forward to uh, running our sprayer. Yeah, a new piece of equipment for one of our Let's Plays that we've never used before. been sat there since we bought it waiting patiently for its opportunity to show show us what it can do and its time is coming next episode we will start spraying stuff not going to bother spraying the grass that's a bit of a waste at this stage oh, now he's finished uh, planting well, that's good. We've almost finished cultivating. good stuff so yeah next episode we will uh, get the, the uh, get the cedar going on this field here get our second field of soybeans planted 
and uh, we will also start spraying and we'll start spraying field 4 and then come back through for 11, 13 and 14 after that I probably could and perhaps should have uh, stuck a crop on field 4 I'm sorry on field 8 instead of putting it grass but never mind what study's done I'm quite prepared to work just the four fields I mean like I said I wanted to get that uh, grassed out before I changed my mind on it completely so uh, this episode is just about done now so uh, I will continue to uh, to cultivate this uh, in between this and the next episode, and uh, and as I say, we'll get we'll get started seeding and uh, and spraying when when you come back. So, thank you all for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all the usual good good stuff. My name's Jim Bob, and I will catch you back on the farm very soon.